Microsoft unveiled its Windows 10-based Surface Hub conference room system back in January, and this morning revealed more details. The product comes in two versions. The 84-inch 4K Surface Hub retails for $19,999, basically 20K, while the 55-inch 1080p version costs $6,999. These are going to be sold through, uh, through you know, re uh, through... Um, what do they call them? Resellers. So you'll have to contact them. Microsoft won't sell them directly through their stores or anything like that. Now, the product goes on pre-order July 1st and ships in September, according to Microsoft. The system has two wide-angle HD cameras, an array of microphones and other sensors, and enables touch input from up to 100 fingers at a time and up to three pens simultaneously. And the, the system ship with two pens. The development of the Surface Hub has been years in the making, and Microsoft has been highly secretive about the project. This morning, however, Fast Company's Harry McCracken revealed how the Surface Hub came to be, and he joins us now. Welcome to you, Harry McCracken. Hey, Mike. It's great to be with you. Great. I'm glad you're here. Now, before we get into your story, what is your overall opinion on the Surface Hub as a product? Well, they're definitely trying to fix a problem which exists um, when conference rooms have PCs. They tend to be a pain. Uh, you, you know, they're they're locked up. You don't know the password. Uh, connecting laptops to a projector fails an amazingly high percentage of the time. If you're in a remote office, it's really hard to participate in meetings somewhere else. And the Surface Hub attempts to address all of these issues. Hey, Harry, it's uh, Kevin. Always good to see you, and I appreciate your sharing the uh, view of your igloo there. Um, quick question for you. Uh, you know, you talk about what the Surface Hub is going to do. I mean, how does it really compare with existing products? Because really, this isn't the first type of product to try and bring in-office collaboration. There are products from InFocus and Clary Icon, but uh, how does it really compare to those? Well, this one seems quite a bit more sophisticated technology-wise. Um, it uses an optically bonded capacitive touchscreen so basically very similar technology to an iPhone or a Surface tablet, except much, much larger, which led Microsoft to decide that the best way to make this was to manufacture them itself at a factory near Portland. Um, it, the big one is a 4K screen. Uh, Microsoft was able to do something which those other companies weren't, which was to get the Windows team and the Office team developing software designed for these large screens. So. Um, it's not just a hardware challenge, it's also a software one. Um, the products you mentioned actually still run Windows 7. This is the first product this type designed with Windows 10 in mind. So similar idea, I think quite a bit more sophistication from a technology standpoint. Now, the story of the Surface Hub, as you uh, went into detail in your article, begins with Jeff Hahn. Can you tell us about who Jeff Hahn is and where he comes from and what he has done? Well, back in 2005, Jeff Hahn was researching multi-touch input uh, before the iPhone was announced. So people didn't know that term and they didn't even understand the concept. And in 2006, he did a, a TED Talk, which was one of the first TED Talks to go viral, where he did things like pinching and zooming photographs, which today, you know, are kind of humdrum. Everybody knows about that. And in 2006, it blew people away. And he started a company called Perceptive Pixel which Microsoft acquired in 2012. Uh, and he's not the only person at Microsoft doing this. It really is sort of a cross-company initiative. But uh, they took his technology for doing big screen, multi-touch, and it was sort of the foundation from a hardware standpoint of what they're doing. Um, and yeah, I, I went to Wilsonville, which is where they're building these in Oregon, and got to spend some time with him talking about his vision, which he's had for a decade. And Surface Hub is sort of the, the clearest, most ambitious incarnation of what he's been trying to do for a long time. Harry, you said you got to actually go to Wilsonville, Oregon. Um, what was it like in there and in, in what they're trying to create here with Surface Hub? Well, it was pretty cool because I, I got to see them building these things. And um, technologically, it's kind of similar to building an iPhone screen or an iPad screen or a Surface tablet screen, except they're working with these massive 84 inch panels and they have to layer on these, these touch layers which are kind of on these big saran wrap like rolls. And um, if you've ever tried to do something like put a, um, a screen on top of your iPhone to protect that, you know how hard it is even at that size to do that without messing it up and getting little bubbles. Uh, Microsoft has to do this on these huge screens. It's really hard that they build all this custom machinery and gigantic robotic arms 
to hoist stuff up. It's really a fascinating experience to actually see that stuff. Uh, and one little speck of dust could mess it all up. So I had to put on one of these funny suits, these, these clean room uniforms in order to go in. Now, Harry, uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but Oregon is the sort of hotbed for this kind of technology. Uh, for example, um, Polycom, which I believe is based in San Jose, uh, acquired the assets of HP's visual collaboration business and its Halo products, and those were developed in Corvallis, Oregon, in Focus, which is another product that competes, uh, as you mentioned, with the uh, Surface Hub, uh, their monopad product. They're based in Portland, Oregon. What is it about Oregon that attracts this kind of business, this kind of technology? That's the first part of my question. And the second part of the question is, why aren't they making this thing in China like everybody else? Well, um the you know, Portland area actually has a long history of technology, and a lot of it relates to display stuff. Going back to the 1940s, when this company called Tektronix was founded, Tektronix made lab equipment and still does. Uh, and uh, that involved a lot of technology relating to displays, and a bunch of spin-offs, including In Focus, were founded by Tektronix folks. And so uh, Perceptive Pixel, Jeff Hahn's company, went to Portland originally to take advantage of that display engineering know-how. In terms of why it's not made in uh, China and it's not made by a third party, basically so much of what Microsoft is doing is new that they can't just go to a factory at, at some place like Foxconn where they're building something similar and take advantage of the economies of scale of doing that. They, they had to design their own equipment and they decided it just, you know, once you've designed that equipment, it makes sense to just run it. And they do say that if at some point Surface Hub becomes a big deal, and scales up and, and they're building them by the million they might you know go some somewhere else for that but right now they're in portland they're in the same building as the hardware engineers so as the guys who engineered it have issues they can just walk over to the manufacturing line which is something you can't accomplish when you outsource it to another continent Harry, all this research, development, investment really leads to another question in my mind. When I look at the Surface products, which are you know Microsoft built and sold, um, you've got a consumer aspect to them with Surface, Surface Pro. You also have the enterprise aspect uh, for Surface Pro in the workplace. This is clearly a, a big enterprise play, I would assume, probably digital media as well. Uh, I also remember, though, that the original Surface, Microsoft took a $900 million inventory hit because it didn't pan out so well. And it seems to me like they're taking a really big risk here in terms of, of the investment and the cost. Would you agree with that? Or do you think they're onto something here? I mean, I think it has the potential to do well, but um, you know, Microsoft's history of getting the world excited about new categories in hardware and actually having them pay off on the scale that the company expects has not been great. I think this is a little different because this is so purely an enterprise product. You're not gonna see this at the Microsoft store I imagine you will not see this advertised on TV. Um, they're going through the, the kind of, of companies that sell equipment to large companies for conference rooms, um, which I think is smart because big companies actually do spend quite a bit on technology for conference rooms. And the Surface Hub is sort of a, a Swiss Army knife. And it can potentially replace multiple products, which, which, which would cost more. So I'm not confident saying this is clearly going to be a huge business for them, but I think it's a little bit more specific. They seem to be going about it in an intelligent way, and at least the opportunity exists, and it's not reacting to the iPad in the, in the way that um, Microsoft's acquiring Nokia was a response to the iPhone, and the Surface Tablet was a response to the iPad. This actually is trying to make a somewhat small category large, and Microsoft seems to be as good a place as anybody to do it. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, this is a, a rare case uh, in recent years where Microsoft is ahead of the curve. They're reinventing uh, something that's very important to businesses, essentially how conference rooms work. Uh, they have a, a product that's very beautiful. I mean, it's just breathtaking to look at uh, and uh, it's super easy to use. Uh, I think they're really on to a hit. That's just my opinion. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you, Harry, for writing such a great story about this because, of course, they, they come out of uh, left field with this product. And it's great to know where it come, came from, how it relates to Perceptive Pixel and all the rest. Uh, and you pretty much answered all the questions I was having about this whole product. Harry McCracken is at FastCompany.com and also Technologizer.com. He's coming to us from the Fast Company Biodome. I want to thank you for that. And you can also follow him on Twitter at Harry McCracken. Harry, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much, Mike. All right.